he joined the company in 2002 and has been also responsible for the international operations. Before that, he worked in Frankfurt on the banking and advisory sector. He has got a BA degree in politics and management. Hesvald is an independent company specialized in advisory and asset valuation. Please, Sandra, give us a flavor on the current situation of the residential sector. What evolution of the sector do you think is ahead in the near future? Well, um, I think this is kind of the $1 million question, what is going to happen, so you don't have the crystal ball, I don't have the crystal ball. Um, but I, I mean, just to, um, just to give you, you know, I mean, my perspective, I mean, we have to keep in mind that um, the, the sector, the residential sector um, passed through an earthquake, I would say, uh, the, the last, uh, last years. Uh, there were uh, completed buildings uh, in 2007 of about uh, 560,000 um, units and, um, and as low as 40,000 in 2014, which is definitely a, a big, big difference. Um, banking finance dropped uh, dramatically as well, and uh, from as much as uh, 16 uh, billion um, euro mortgage lending in 2006 um, to only 2.5 billion. Euro in, in 2014. So there as well new players. Um, uh, banks uh, seem to be kind of allergic to, to hold their asset um, management platforms. So they they sold them um, with few exceptions, um, as BBVA or Banco Sarabel, for example. Um, Sareb, by the contrary, um, it's just managing directly and through third parties as well. Um, and it's quite interesting to see the, the difference uh, between some, uh, some financial institutions uh, that find a, a value in, in selling their platforms and some of them that find it in keeping their platforms. So this, is, this, is quite a, um, this is quite an interesting a strategy as well. Um, I think there is well new forms of, uh, of development, uh, which is quite interesting in our market. Um, Spain was quite, uh, from my point of view, was quite a classical, um, developer uh, or sector, uh, the sector, the development sector was quite classical. Um, and um, it seems that we found other, other methods of, of development, uh, of producing uh, residential units through cooperative manager companies instead of the classical real estate developers. Um, at the same time, the product has changed dramatically uh, from my point of, uh, point of view major constraints like the land cost, which was uh, a key issue, have softened somehow um, to create a more, I would say, more appropriate product and um, um, probably closer to the consumer. So I think that's, that's as well a point. We, have, we can't forget as well that um, Spaniards have really suffered uh, very much on the, on the crisis. So I would say that there are still many people not able to access to bank and finance, which is a, a very, very important point as well. So this means that there, uh, these uh, people, or a lot of people, are somehow pushed uh, to, to the rental market. Um, and so from, from my point of view, there is a more open market at the time being. Uh, it's kind of more sophisticated at the same time. Um, I think there is, um, we are reaching a better understanding, I don't know whether the audience will be happy about this, but I think we are, we are uh, having more um, understanding between developers and um, equity providers. So slowly, from my point of view, this is coming. Um, and uh, regarding the, uh, the prices and how, how they are going to, to develop, uh, we have prepared you a presentation with help and help. And um, um, I, I will not talk about us since you did it very well. Thank you, Jose Luis. Um, uh, I just I just uh, brought some um, uh, some major indicators of where um, where was our country and where we are. Um, as you see, Spain's recovering economy grew by 1.4 percent in 2004, uh, and it's um, uh, estimated uh, that we could reach 2.7 percent 
uh, according to European institutions, um, Spanish government or financial institutions. Um, uh, the government deficit, I mean, Spain, uh, Spain's public deficit stood at 5.5% of the GDP uh, last year, uh, significantly below 5.8 limit. Um, uh, I, I, I will go quite quick, but just, just, to, just, to, just to see where we are and where we were, which is very important too. Um, um, the Spanish government is, I think, it has to be at the same time. They are, but they have to be as well. Uh, fully compromised to respect uh, Spain's deficit target imposed by the, by the European Central Bank. Um, quite an important issue is the nominal labor cost index. Um, I think uh, you know, unit labor costs in Spain have returned to pre-crisis levels, um, which is a key point from my point of view. Um, I think that the, res the recent Spanish labor reform uh, brought more flexibility uh, to, the, to the market, which is, from my perspective, a very positive thing. Uh, well, uh, exchange rates, uh, euro versus US dollar, um, it stood at uh, 1.12, uh, and, and uh, well, as you know, a weaker, a weaker euro um, attracts foreign investments to Europe uh, in general and in real estate uh, specifically. And um, our famous 10-year um, uh, bond yield, um, as you see, I think currently, finally, Spain is perceived as a safe country. Um, and, and going more focused on real estate, um, um, in, in any case, I mean, Spain has been, and it is, oh, sorry, and it is, um, a highly um, internationalized country uh, where investment origin, I mean, as I, as I mentioned, uh, from sorry, from national to international uh, during the crisis. But uh, thanks to uh, the Spanish REITs, to Sotimis, uh, this uh, shot up uh, to national investment in, in 2014 with, uh, uh, with a significant difference uh, between, I mean, between 2013. Um, <laughs> you have a lot to say there. <laughs> it is indeed, it is. So, um, well, this is the evolution of the investment volume um, uh, from um, second half of 2013. Um, I think there was, well, we started to, to see a path of to, to recovery. Um, and the, these uh, trends changed significantly in 2014. Um, the investment volume increased in all sectors, but especially in offices and uh, retail. And these are the percentages. Um, um, well, is there a new trend? This is this is the this is I think uh, have we I think we, we have all asked ourselves: Is there a new trend or not? Is it still there or not? Um, uh, this is this is how we were in 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, and uh, first half of 2013. <laughs> Due to New York Times and the Economist. And um, well, this is where we are in recovery um, from 2013 and 2014. So it's not that bad. <laughs> and how it happened? Um, just to, I think this is probably more interest uh, interest for uh, for foreign uh, investors today or foreign uh, uh, foreigners than Spanish, but but Spanish people, but. How, how we made it, how it happened. Um, well, basically in 2011, our government didn't recognize their failure uh, well, um, towards the management of, of the banking crisis. I think that in 2012, um, there was a new government and they had to accept failures on, on existing policy. Um, there were very important uh, points, um, creation of SAREP, which I think is a key point. Uh, um, increase of direct and indirect taxes and uh, banking industry recapitalization. Uh, in 2013, uh, well, uh, the European Central Bank uh, accepted to support Southern European economies. Um, and in 2014, we definitely saw uh, an investment appetite toward, uh, towards um, Spain. 
from, as I mentioned before, from the second half of 2013. Um, Madrid and Barcelona, of course, um, cast uh, investment, uh, investors focus, and, um, and the volume increased uh, significantly. 2015, where we are, uh, investment market is normalizing um, at a reasonable level of, your, of I mean, both on volume and price. Mm, and I would like to remark that the market, from my point of view, is slowly, uh, I would say it again, slowly, <laughs> but um, you know, widening and reaching non profits, but very, very slow. Um, uh, I, I would like to, I mean, retail, it's uh, as, as mentioned before, a key, uh, well, it's a very important um, type of. Uh, of um, assets in, in our country. This, this is the this is the scenario in 2014. Uh, 17 new openings, 18 extensions. But very important. Um, visitor, I mean, 5.8, nearly 6 percent more visitors than uh, versus 2013, and 5 percent more sales in 2013. Um, 24 transactions and uh, 327,000 direct jobs. This is really a big industry. Um, uh, well, these are these are the, the yields. Um, there might be a lot of um, opinions on that, uh, uh, depending on what was the last transaction. But uh, but in any case, <laughs> but in any case, um, happy to happy to discuss. But um, regarding residential, it was the, the this is um, this is the number of uh, completed buildings in January 2015, and uh, and this is the um, split um, of in between individuals, corporates, um, public administrations, and so on. Um, the one of the mm, Big questions I've heard is uh, what happens with the stock of unsold new units. Um, we have to keep in mind that the average during its production in, in the last 22 years uh, ascends, ascends to 300,000 units. Um, most of the investors believe that um, that you know this is going to be a big problem in our this is still a big problem in our market. From my point of view, I think Spain, uh, the Spanish residential market is kind of a, a mix or um, of of many sec of, of many factors, uh, and um, and and that's that's the reason why I, I mean to be honest, I mean, from my from our point of view, there is still some I mean there there are already sorry some locations uh, with an unsatisfied demand. So I think this is uh, important. Uh, Madrid uh, or several special points or special locations in Madrid or Barcelona or place. Um, well, this is the, the evolution of the mortgage debt granted in, in Spain from 2003 until 2014, uh, sorry, and, um, and as you see in 2013 and 14, um, uh, saving banks, well, as you know, disappeared. Uh, but the decrease of, of granted mortgages from, from the peaks, I mean, which was 2007, um, has been definitely very, very significant on, on the saving bank. Um, and uh, this is the this is the scenario. Uh, on I, we, I'm, I'm going to show you just four important cities uh, in in Spain: Madrid, Barcelona, Sevilla, and uh, Valencia. Uh, you will see. I, I don't want to uh, bother you with a lot of data, but just to see how the variation. On the prices have been uh, from 2011 until 2014, and how it looks from 2013 to 2014. So you will see that uh, there are already some green lights um, because um, there are some positive numbers, and at the same time there are as well some of them that although they are negative still. Uh, they look much, much better than the variation between 2011 and 14. Um, this is Madrid. I mean, uh, uh, this is Barcelona. Uh, seems to to perform really good. 
the better way if you if you compare with the variation between 11 and 14. Uh, this is Valencia mm, with uh, some positive numbers, as you see at Ciudad Bella or Echamp, no, sorry, at uh, Estrabius. And uh, this is Sevilla. I mean, in any case, we'll be happy to share this data with you if you, if you are interested. Um, and well, just as conclusions, um, uh, I think there are, that we see on, on primary locations, uh, we see a moderate to considerable uh, increase on, on prices um, for the near for the near future, um, and uh, there's still some liquidity for other kind of categories. Um, but it has to be as always good location, good quality, and good infrastructure. And uh, on secondary on secondary um, location, oh, sorry, secondary um, uh, residents, uh, we will be. Very, I mean, we, we will have to keep the, the, the eye on how the GDP is going to, to be on our neighboring countries, um, the UK or France, Germany, the Netherlands. 